everybody. Today's practice problem comes from Economics by Dean Carlin and Jonathan Mordock. Today we're going to be doing chapter 12, problem number 8. The problem says, last year, Jared left a job that pays $60,000 to run his own bike repair shop. Jared's shop charges $65 for a repair, and last year the shop performed 3,000 repairs. Jared's production costs for the year included rent, wages, and equipment. Jared spent $50,000 on rent and $100,000 on wages for his employees. Jared keeps whatever profit the shop earns, but does not pay himself an official wage. Jared borrowed $20,000 for the shop's equipment at an annual interest rate of 5%. And then there are two parts to the problem. One of the parts asks us to calculate Jared's accounting profit and the other one asks us to calculate Jared's economic profit. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to understand what the difference between those two things actually is. So we'll just start with that sort of equation. And we usually think of profit, you know, just as a reminder, we usually simplify a little bit and we just say, oh, profit is just total revenue minus total cost. But here we need to be a little bit more specific than that to fully understand the distinction between accounting profit and economic profit. So here I can write accounting profit is just total revenue minus explicit costs. I could have written total explicit costs if I wanted to. Whereas economic profit, call that econ pi, again, starts with total revenue. But then, rather than just subtracting off explicit costs, we subtract off what I'll call total opportunity costs. And we can say that this total opportunity cost, or what we actually refer to in economics when we say the words total cost, as the sum of explicit cost and implicit cost. So we could say that economic profit is just total revenue minus the sum of explicit costs and implicit costs. So you'll notice that the distinction between the formula for accounting profit and the formula for economic profit is that economic profit also counts implicit costs as a cost in the formula. So the next step that we need to go through is understand what an implicit cost is. Explicit costs are costs that are usually the ones we're used to thinking about, meaning those things that were explicitly, not surprisingly, given the term, writing a check for, paying via credit card, handing over cash for, that were explicitly paying out money. Implicit costs, on the other hand, are costs that don't involve a literal paying out of money, but are still costs nonetheless in that they represent foregone opportunities or foregone situations where I could have earned money. Okay, And as we go through the different examples of the different costs incurred by Jared's business, we'll be able to see that distinction between explicit and implicit costs, and it becomes a little bit more clear when there are examples involved. So what we'd want to do here is we'd want to actually come up with three headings to think about these different types of profit that I could say, let's think about revenue over here, which is just the money that we're bringing in. And then let's think about explicit costs here. We'll keep a running total of those. And then let's think about implicit costs over here. So we can just go through the problem and think about for each cost that's listed, whether it's an explicit cost or an implicit cost. So let's just go through an order. It says, last year, Jared left a job that pays $60,000 to run his own bike repair shop. So he's not literally paying 
$60,000 for the privilege of running this bike repair shop, but he did give up an opportunity that was worth $60,000, right? So, you know, it's only a matter of semantics to some degree to say that an explicit cost of $60,000 means you're writing a check for $60,000 versus an implicit cost of $60,000 means that you're getting nothing when you used to be receiving $60,000. See the difference? Nonetheless, this $60,000 that Jared was making at the job that he had to give up to take on this new business counts as an implicit cost. So we can say over here, we've got 60,000 per year implicit cost. We can keep going. It says, Jared's shop charges $65 for a repair, and last year the shop performed 3,000 repairs. So that's talking about money coming in. So that's gonna be under our revenue calculation here, right? So we can say that they're getting a price, well, this is our quantity. Our quantity is 3,000. And our price is 65. So here we know that total revenue, when we're selling all of our output for the same price, is just price times quantity, right? So to figure out our revenue, we just have to multiply these numbers. Now, of course, we could use a calculator, or we could just say, well, let's just multiply these and we get something that looks like this. For a total of $195,000 of revenue. So far, so good. Then we come back to the cost side and it says Jared's production costs for the year included rent, wages, and equipment. Jared spent $50,000 on rent. So we actually spent that money so that's going to be an explicit cost. So we can put $50,000 here. And it also says he spent $100,000 on wages for his employees. Again, when you're paying out money, that's an explicit cost. So we can put that $100,000 also under explicit costs here. Now, the last piece of information says, Jared keeps whatever profit the shop earns but does not pay himself an official wage. Jared borrowed $20,000 for the shop's equipment at an annual interest rate of 5%. Now we have to think about what to do with that, right? So he borrowed $20,000 and he bought some equipment, presumably equipment worth $20,000. So those two things cancel each other out, right? That what he bought with the money that he borrowed, well, that's just exchanging one form of capital for another. It's just exchanging financial capital for physical capital. Then if he could sell the physical capital for $20,000, he could make this totally reversible, give the bank back its money. So that in and of itself isn't necessarily counted as a cost, right? In the same way that we're paying out wages, we're not getting, we're getting labor in return, of course, but we're not getting some sort of durable capital good in return. So we want to think about here, well, what actually costs, you know, what counts as a cost in this particular context? And we'll notice that Jared is not able to only transfer one type of asset into another because he has to pay interest, right? So while he may have borrowed the $20,000 to purchase $20,000 of capital, he also has to pay this annual interest rate of 5%. So he actually has to pay the bank 5% times $20,000 or $1,000 a year for the privilege of borrowing that money to get the asset worth $20,000. So we can add over here, we can say, he borrowed $20,000. He has to pay 5% interest on that. So he actually has an explicit cost of $1,000. I want to think a little bit more carefully for a second about this notion of the interest charged on this loan. Because 
we have two different ways we can think about interest, actually. In this particular example, the problem said that we borrowed the money from the bank and are paying interest on a loan. And that's why we counted that interest as a cost that is under the explicit cost category. But notice still, it was the interest only that was charged here and not the $20,000 in addition because we got the $20,000 and invested it in $20,000 of, $20, of capital. So it's really the interest that becomes relevant. And here it was an explicit cost. But let's turn this around a little bit and say, well, what if we had this money in our savings account instead? In this case, we had the money in our savings account and we weren't actually paying interest to borrow the money. It seems in an explicit sense that putting this $20,000 towards the business would be free, that the explicit cost would be zero, and that would be correct. But that doesn't actually mean that the total cost of doing so would be zero. Because what you're actually doing, if you have $20,000 in the bank, and then you're choosing to invest that $20,000 in your business, you're foregoing whatever interest that $20,000 in the bank could have earned. So now interest rates are basically at zero, which means the implicit cost of doing that is very low. But let's think about a very simple scenario where the money, this $20,000, rather than being borrowed, was in somebody's savings account earning an interest rate of 5% per year. If that were the case, then if the $20,000 from that savings account were invested in the business, there would be an implicit cost of $1,000 because that $1,000 is the interest that would have been earned in the bank that's not being earned because the $20,000 was put into the business instead. So now to figure out accounting profit and economic profit, all we have to do is add up these numbers and then subtract according to the formulas here. So here our explicit costs are 50,000 plus 100,000 plus 1,000, that's going to give us a total of 151,000 per year. And then our implicit cost, we don't actually need to do any adding because there's only one of them in this example. So we can just leave this at $60,000. And we can say our accounting profit is just our total revenue, which is 195,000. minus our explicit costs, which are 151,000. So if we were to subtract these here, we get $44,000 per year in accounting profit. That's easy enough. Now, to calculate economic profit, we again start with total revenue, which is $195,000. But now we have to subtract off not only this $151,000, but also, because if we look at our formula, we're now doing total revenue minus the sum of explicit costs and implicit costs. We've got to add in this $60,000 here. So what we're actually seeing, if we're going to do this math, now I'm going to get out the handy dandy calculator, is we're seeing we're going to get a number that's smaller than our accounting profit here. So if I were to do this, I would say 195,000 minus 151,000 and then minus 60,000 because that's just distributing our negative, right? And what we see here is that we actually have negative $16,000 of economic profit. Notice that because the difference between accounting profit and economic profit is exactly this implicit cost here, we could have also calculated economic profit by just saying, well, our accounting profit is $44,000. I need to take that $44,000 and then subtract out from that 
the implicit cost because that's the additional cost that we're considering in economic profit that was not counted in accounting profit. And again, if you did that, you would get 44,000 minus 60,000, which is of course negative $16,000. Now we can think about what this means a little bit. We notice that in general, our economic profit is going to be less than our accounting profit. And that's gonna be true whenever we have some positive implicit costs here, or when we have some positive foregone alternative opportunity as compared to the path that we're considering, in this case, starting a new uh, bike repair business, right? And it's even possible, as we see here, for accounting profit to be positive, but economic profit to be negative. And that's because the interpretation of economic profit is, is the following. Positive economic profit means you're doing strictly better than you could elsewhere. You're getting some extra sort of profit. Economic profit of zero just means you're doing okay. You're doing as well as you could elsewhere. And a negative economic profit means you're not doing as well as you could be doing elsewhere. So it's really important to understand what this measure of economic profit actually means, especially since we're gonna be coming back a lot and talking about this idea of zero economic profit, where zero profit in a traditional sense or in an accounting sense sounds pretty terrible. But what we're gonna see is that firms are generally more or less happy with zero economic profit. And that sounds weird if you don't understand what's going on here. So we can say here that this negative economic profit means that this business owner could be doing better elsewhere. And we can actually see why that's the case. So here, by opening this bike repair business, our entrepreneur is making $44,000 a year. But in order to make this $44,000 a year, he had to give up a job that paid him $60,000 a year. So even just comparing these two numbers shows us exactly why he could be doing better elsewhere and also shows directly the math of why economic profit is negative here.